Uh, hi YouTube, this is uh, Cold Warrior 78 channel, I'm Ron. Uh, we're gonna do a tour of the homestead today. Uh, this is actually aimed at my father-in-law. Uh, he's 96 years old, he lives in Louisiana, can't get up here to see the place. Uh, so he hasn't been here in a couple of years. So dad, this is for you. Stand by and we'll show you what's going on. Okay, so we're back. We're gonna start with our garden area. Now this is one of the raised beds. I built that uh, two years ago, I think. Uh, there's another one over here. That's our water barrel for doing the irrigation. The bed in front of you here is full of sweet potatoes, as is this end of the big bed. Uh, most of the things in there died when this pumpkin plant started taking over the world. So what we did is we, we raised it on strings going up. Uh, as you can see, sorry about that. You can see this framework at the top. There's cattle panels on top of these things. So we took strings, went up, took all these vines, went up with them. And as you can see, we have pumpkins growing. I'm going to try to use my finger here. Uh, let's see, there's one there. There's one there, uh, there's one over there, uh, there's a couple more in there you can't see. So growing the pumpkins vertically takes up a lot less space. The plant is a lot healthier and it frees up a lot more room for other things. We've also got on this side some cucumbers going up. We'll get a better shot of that in a second here. Hang on. Okay, I'm standing in the archway. This is a cattle panel that we bent over. We have, uh, let me come down a little bit so you can see better. Cucumbers growing right in here on both sides. Got some more over on this side. Tomato plants as well, they're backed up in here. So the archway, when these guys get uh, get fully fleshed out, they'll cover up over here and we'll actually have a, a slightly shaded walkway going into the house. And it gives another raised area, in this case for cucumbers. Cucumbers are coming in great, they love climbing these things. And I switch over to our forest of tomatoes. These things are, well, I'm five foot ten. They're going a uh, foot and a half past my head, uh, so they're going great. We put in a load, actually two pickup trucks full of uh, cow manure this year from a friend's farm. Uh, not technically composted, it was just old. It'd been They had laid it in the, in the field for a couple of months, but uh, that really helped the, uh, the growth of all this stuff. Hang on a minute. Now in front of you, you see our potato patch. Uh, don't remember exactly how many individual plants there are. Uh, Brenda did all the hard work in, in doing the planting. Again, uh, all of our raised beds are effectively the same. Uh, they're approximately 30 inches wide on the inside, eight feet long or made out of eight foot long landscape timbers. And they all have a superstructure above them with a cattle panel on top. There's a good example of it. And we do that uh, so that we can switch the crops around. There we go, so you can kind of see me. We do that so we can switch the crops around because uh, one of the problems we've had in the past is if you keep growing potatoes in the same place, you get the potato bugs over there, tomato worms go to where the tomatoes are and things. So if you move around from year to year where you plant things, uh, they tend to come up a lot better. That's one of the things we learned as we're doing this. Uh, so I built these superstructures behind me on each of them because the potatoes don't need it this year, but if I move the tomatoes in here next year, then we can use that. If I put squash in here next year, we'll run them up strings as well, uh, beans, anything like that. So with all of them being built pretty much the same, it gives me the flexibility to plant anything I want in there at any particular year. Now in front of you, 
is an apple tree uh, that we're trying to get growing in here. Uh, this is a food forest idea. Uh, we've got, I believe those are blackberries. Over here, directly almost down from the camera, is an elderberry bush. And then another blackberry over here in front of the far side of the apple tree. Uh, what we're trying to do is, because this place is so hilly, is take the, the scrap wood that's laying around. You can see some of the bigger trees in the background that we had to cut down to open this space up some. Use all those branches, make a berm going around there like a little retaining wall. Fill this up with dirt, good dirt, so we can use that as a garden area. As we swing around past all this junk, you can see more of the trees that are down. We cut these so that they wouldn't come down in a storm. We're actually on a bit of a hill, so as we're swinging around, we're actually going up an elevation about eight feet. Uh, up here behind you, uh, what you can see here are grapevines. There are two blueberry bushes over here. Uh, I believe that's another elderberry bush over there. Uh, and then a peach tree here in the middle. Okay, and that's in another berm. You can see how those are built uh, kind of here with uh, all these sticks and stuff. They're just the branches from those trees. And then we threw dirt behind it to, to raise the level so you have a flat, flat ground. Okay, stand by. Now in here, this is a uh, uh, kind of a raised bed. Behind it is the retaining wall that I built 15 years ago for our parking lot. We leveled this area off, put some cow manure in it, uh, improved the soil with sand and peat moss, and that's where Brenda's growing her watermelons. That's all the watermelon in there. You can see them spilling down onto the walkway here in the front. To the side of that is kind of a, a riot of carrots, beans, and peas in the back. And then these are the cucumbers on the far end that go up to the stairway we have coming up out of the house. So the parking lot's back there. We were just talking about the raised beds. You can see those on the back there. That's, that's the back side of that one raised bed. The other raised bed's over there. So we live on quite a hill. So if you terrace things off, you can use it. Uh, this is a walkway in here, so we have level space to deal with everything. And if you go uphill from there, let's see if you can see them from here. Yeah, you got a good shot of the uh, there's a pumpkin over here, and another pumpkin over there, and the other one's behind the post. Stand by. Now in front of you here, Brenda's strawberry bed. We've got two plants that were kind of established last year. The rest of these were all planted this year, and that goes the full length of our retaining wall on this end. We had to put in a fence on the top side, you can see it up here, that whole thing, to uh, keep my dog from diving from the top down into that and digging around. Uh, so the fence along the top side keeps him out, and then these little sections of fence panel, that's cattle panel, uh, that was left over from doing other things, they help keep the rabbits out. The, uh, the big bulky thing up in here, that's an IBC tote, that's 300 gallons of water. Again, help us with the um, irrigation. And that's the uh, shed with a roof that I rebuilt last, I think it was last year. Might've been a year before, don't remember anymore. Stand by. Uh, these barrels in here, this is our rainwater catchment system. The uh, white pipe here and the white pipe there come in from the downspouts. They fill up the top two rows. 
The overflow goes down into the bottom three barrels from both of them. And then there's an overflow at the end. And we use that to catch rainwater coming off the roof so that we can then move it by way of a little pump, which is off here out of the picture, up this way towards the garden because everything is unfortunately uphill from the house. This is our chicken house. I built this several years ago and Brenda decided she wanted to have chickens. The, uh, the house itself houses, uh, well, you probably put 20 chickens in there without a lot of trouble. Probably a lot more. Uh, we have space here on the bottom. Uh, let's see if I can see where we're indexing here. Uh, these two doors here on the bottom are for cleaning out. Uh, although we have uh, two hens raising chicks down there at the moment. And then the ones up here are where the nest boxes are for where they lay eggs. We assume they're always going to raise the chicks up there. Uh, comes to find out they like doing it on the floor. So that works. Uh, we have a small run on the on your right side. Uh, it's that little four foot high, four foot wide thing. And then one on this side, uh, it's big enough for us to get in the door there so that we can get in and deal with things. Plus on the back, on the back side of that, we have uh, two big swing out doors to clean everything out. And then as you can see right in here, we have another rain barrel. So we have a gutter going across the back of the roof, drains water into there, and then the chickens drink out of the little nipples that are on that pipe down here. So other than throwing them food every once in a while, these guys pretty much take care of themselves. As soon as I'm done with the video, I'm gonna open the door and let them out. They just peck around here. Now, if you'll excuse me moving this over here is the shed that I built last summer. Yeah, we're not level at all. Let me try to adjust that. There we go. That's a little bit more level. Okay, so this shed is uh, 12 feet long, 12 feet wide, 8 feet high to the to the rafter edge, and then a little bit more in the middle. Got a little bit of an overhang here in the front, a little overhang in the back. The, uh, we use it for storage because we just have too much stuff. All the chicken feed is in there. When we get goats, their stuff's gonna be in there. And then uh, Corey's stuff is in uh, mostly on this side. He's getting ready to move into a house. Uh, you can hear the heavy machinery in the background. They're working that way about a quarter mile on his, uh, his land. So hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully in about two weeks, three weeks, uh, he'll have his place cleared out, have a new trailer in there, and he'll be ready to go. And everyone will be happy. Uh, but anyway, a uh, shed is full of stuff. If you have a homestead, you're going to have a shed full of stuff. In fact, you're going to have several sheds full of stuff. Okay, this is a shot inside the shed, uh, showing some of the shelves that I've built, some of the junk that's in here. If we pan this way a little bit, uh, what you see behind you are two by four shelves, two foot apart, so two foot, four foot, six foot, half inch plywood shelf, supported by uh, basically a two by four stud construction lay on its side. Supported by landscaping timbers. These things are really really strong Which is good because we put a lot of stuff on them as you can see over here We have uh, Chicken feed we tend to buy in bulk uh, So I keep uh, Each of these buckets runs about a week week and a half depending on how much the chickens get out so uh, we need to keep a couple of weeks of food on hand. Uh, we've also got layer food in here, farther in the back. And then stuff, because when you live on a homestead, you have stuff. Yeah, 
In fact, we have so much stuff, I'm going to be building another shed right in here. Probably 12 foot wide. That goes from that corner over here to the bank. Back to about, let's see, a little bit past that pile of dirt, but before you get to the tree. 16 feet back, 12 foot wide. Now we're going to do that because when my son moves out, down so you can see me here, when Corey moves out into his own place, we're renovating uh, and taking care of some things that we've just been putting off for too long. We live in a log home. The interior of the logs were stained, but they weren't uh, varnished, so they're not smooth. And so over the years, one room at a time, taking stuff out, sanding, varnishing the walls, uh, doing the floor if we had to do the floor, and then putting stuff back in. And now that uh, Corey's on a point of moving out, we need to have a place to put everything that fits in the living room, the dining room, um, probably our bedroom upstairs, uh, and just take all that stuff out and, and take care of that part of the house all at once. Uh, and we'll probably live in the addition end of the house while we're doing that, uh, simply because if you get uh, a stray dog hair up into the varnish on the walls, it'll be there forever, and we don't want that. Uh, but varnishing the walls makes it much, much easier to clean, which is really what, what we're going for on that. So I'm building another shed, probably next month or so. Uh, it all depends on uh, time, money, getting some help. We usually get help from our, uh, our friends in the homeschool group. Uh, they have kids that need to learn how to use tools and how to build stuff. I know how to build stuff. I have tools. We can make that work. Typically make a class out of it so they can get some school credit as well. Hi, I'm going to handhold this next part because it's uh, <laughs> going to be hard enough to do. This is Snowball. Yep. And just the camera. There you go, buddy. Okay, and that's Oreo. If you can hold still enough. All right, Oreo is Corey's dog. Snowball's our dog. Uh, Dad, you remember Snowball when he was smaller than Oreo. He's uh, somewhere between uh, 60 and 80 pounds. Yeah, Daddy tastes like a like a salt shaker. But he's between uh, 60 and 80 pounds. He's twice the size of Oreo. These are our buddies. There we go. How about that? Get a better perspective of how tall he really is. He comes up to my knees. This is a planter I just got done building for Brenda. Uh, the deck on top is about 14 inches long. The thickness of the actual planter is about eight inches. And it's a place for her to put all of her herbs and all the plants that she's working on. I'm trying to get big enough to actually put into the garden. So that's her, her work area. That's all the stuff she needs to get the work done. And this is on the other end of the house. This is, uh, if you remember, the river is down on there on that side. And this is another planter that I'm making to go in this corner. It's smaller than the, uh, than the other one, but just as wide so that we can do uh, either plants or maybe uh, our mushrooms. We've been doing very good with mushrooms recently. Brenda probably mentioned uh, we bought some uh, mushroom spawn uh, three, four years ago at this point. And I inoculated several logs after Hurricane Irma knocked down a really big oak tree in the backyard. Um, and for years it didn't come up. Well, it was taking all that time to do the um, establishing the mycelium, those little white threads that you see attached to a, to a, a mushroom. And so now the big, uh, big log uh, blooms every three and a half or so months. Uh, and so we get lots and lots of shiitake mushrooms out of that. And uh, Brenda's idea is, well, if we can grow them down there, why don't we grow some more up here and we'll, uh, we'll have mushrooms whenever we want them. Not a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> mushrooms, particularly shiitakes, are very, very expensive. They're very good for you, but they're really expensive. 
So if you can grow them yourself, why not? So that's what we're gonna do. So there's another shot of Oreo and Snowball. They're my buddies. I, uh, I hang out with them most of the day while I'm working until I have to put the chickens out and then I leave them inside. Well, Dad, that's all I've got for right now. Uh, as you see, we're still doing stuff. Uh, I've got a dozen projects uh, on the list and several that haven't even made the list. So I'm busy, I'm building, I'm doing the things I like to do. And uh, I've got dogs with me to, to help me do everything I'm doing. So we're doing fine. Stop licking the tripod, you dumb dog. Uh, so we're doing great. And I uh, want to let you see what we've been doing around the, the homestead. So you take care. And uh, we'll see you, I think, in September. All right? So we love you. Bye-bye.